Mike, the plum. Uh, Mike, watch your plum. Yes, Mike. Servo, I know. Thank uh, the you. pattern's not matched up, Mike. The, hey, you know the pattern's not matched up over there either. Thank you, Crow. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike, and uh, Crow and Servo here are helping me lots with my little wallpapering project. That's right. <laughs> I thought this would be a good way to get the place a little perk me up. <laughs> We were going to go with the Christmas wallpaper, and then I put the kibosh on that. And it was very difficult to say no to the birthday wallpaper, but I absolutely fell in love with this. Yes, sir, Bob. We made the right choice. Mm. We got to show Gypsy. Should oh, we yeah. show Gypsy? Hey, Gypsy! Oh, oh. oh my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my! Oh, Ron! 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 Oh, no! Oh, dear! Oh, no! Oh, well, sometimes a new look takes a little getting used to. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah. I think I still see a place where the pattern's not matched up, Mike. Although it is fun when we all pitch in like this, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I think the bats are calling. Uh, really? You know what I found out about you and your cute little friends, Nelson? You're part of the counterculture. That's right, you're the enemy of hardworking guys like us. That's why today is a great day. For today, we rally in support of Proposition Deep 13. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Simply put, Proposition Deep 13 means that we will send you today's experiment, the Beast of Yucca Flats. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it will crush the satellite of love, Nelson, because we've signed a contract with America. Tell him what we're sending him, Frank. We're sending you a wake-up call named the Beast of Yucca Flats. Take that, counterculture. You're out of touch, and we hate you. Oh, you do, do you? Well, maybe we can't match your pomp and your balloons and your bunting. Oh, hold on, I think I got a horn. But what we do have here is this man, the nation's most articulate spokesman for the dream that is the satellite of love. This fearless man who has led us, his quaking sheep, through low our darkest hours. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Need I describe how he stood with us before the goons and truncheons of Peabody Mining? A loyal friend to the Union. Thank you. Thank you. Our, thank you. Our message is a simple one. Crow. Crow. For we have struggled, yet we have prevailed. Through, please, thank you. Through the dark days of outlaw and, and the creeping terror. That we shall triumph, for we are somebody. Yeah. Oh, really? Even if I tell you that the Beast of Yucca Flats is a, another motion picture from Coleman Francis? Well, I think we can survive. We're doomed. We have been forsaken. <laughs> I thought so. So without further delay, be prepared to be crushed 
by the beast of Yaka. Actually, uh, the... there's a short first. After the short? Be prepared to be crushed oh, uh, by the... actually, there's a sh another short after that. In about a half an hour, would that work? <laughs> be prepared to be crushed by the beast of Yaka Flat. <laughs> Come on, we can do it, guys. The dream will never die. Oh, we got movies, sir. Oh, we got movies, sir. Oh, come on. It's gut check time. We can do it. And talks and talks. I can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Ah, for high school students from 7 to 70. I'll bet high school students flock to this movie in droves. <laughs> Produced by imps. Ah, promoting dullardism throughout this great land of ours. Money is fun. <laughs> Money is fun. <laughs> okay, so we steal the money tonight. Ooh, he's had his chest excavated. Greasy scarecrow boy not invited. Want to go to the dance with me? Well, here we go again. Why is it that I always run out of money just when I need it? Why do I conk my hair? Why am I always broke? Maybe it's my crack habit. Bob buys himself a car. While I have to worry about where I'm gonna have to take his sister to a dance. Maybe it's these mortgage payments. Should have bought a smaller house. I don't get it. Ah, the appeal of Adam Sandler. Other people don't seem to worry about money all the time. Why am I always in the red? Even having a huge Malamar doesn't help. Fifty cents. Half a dollar. In those days, I'd buy you a car. Benjamin Franklin, eh? Bite me, Franklin. He was supposed to be a pretty smart fellow when it came to money. I suppose he could have told me how to keep out of the red. He was the best president we ever had. Oh, uh, what's the use? Sorcerer! <laughs> Why must I be a young Christopher Walken? There's no place like a bank. There's no place like a bank. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. William. William, my boy. Can you borrow me a dollar? <laughs> Who's that? Over here, son. Directly in front of you. Tom Bosley's come to haunt him. Don't you recognize me? You were just looking at me on that half dollar. Just reach for the gun. Are you Benjamin Franklin? That's right. Come over here, son. I'd like to talk to you. Could you have your slave press my suit? That's right. Over <laughs> here. Thank you, boy. Perhaps I can be of some help to you in removing you from what you so quaintly describe as the red. For a price. What do you mean? Now, I don't think that your problem is a difficult one, William. You have one important thing to learn, and then you'll have no problem. You must learn how to manage your money. What money? Don't smart mouth me, boy. <laughs> You've a point there, son. You must have some money before you can manage it. But you do not fare badly on that score. You can sell your body. I don't. No. Let me show you. Will our mystery guest enter and sign in, please? Come on, boy. Jump on my stomach. <laughs> Come a little closer. Suppose you look in this mirror and see what it tells you. God, I'm fat. Now, take a good look at you... And your earnings. I'm Kate Moss. You receive $2 every week as an allowance from your father. James Joyce. Something quite unheard of in my day. Fathers? Then you earn about $3 each week delivering for the pharmacy. Here's your sherry. In addition, you obtain another dollar or so in what you call tips. Or protection. You earn between 6 and $7 a week, William. Ooh. A tidy sum for a boy who's still in school. Maybe so, but I never have any money when I need it. That's not because you're a poor earner, William. It's because you're a poor spender. And a bad person. Poor spender? Yes, my boy. You spend your money without any plan. 
You buy whenever the mood strikes you. Furs, cars, trips to Vegas. You spend your money as fast as you acquire it. Yeah. With no thought for the future. You idiot. Then, when something comes along where you need money, you do not have it. On behalf of all girls, none of us are going to the dance with you. Well, I guess you're right. But what should I do about it? I don't know. Whatever you want to do, my boy. Mm. The important thing is to want to do something. Now... Judging from these drawings, you'd like to be an architect someday. Forget it, That's soda right. jerk. Fine. Then let me ask you a question. Why should anyone pay an architect for house plans? Why shouldn't he just go right ahead and build it? He wouldn't know what to do first. He wouldn't have a plan. Exactly. The plan is a guide, a means to an end. It enables a man to build the kind of house he wants for a price he can afford to pay. Oh, my gout. And oh. the same thing, William, holds true in handling money. I hate you. You must decide what you want your money to do for you, and then plan your spending accordingly. Uh. You've heard this before. Ooh. Plan your spending. Ding. Oh, that sounds all right if you have a lot of money to plan with. Listen, little toad. Believe me, William. It's even more important if you do not have a great deal of money. Mm. How come? Because the less money you have, the more careful you must be with it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear of a budget, William? Uh, that's a fish, right? I sure did. Just last night. Whoa, I don't think I want to hear about this. I'm sorry, Bill. I'll have to break your leg. You learn to manage your money. I can't let you go along thinking that money grows on trees. Oh, but I only need another dollar and a half, Dad. You'd have the money for that dance if you kept a budget. I have to keep one, you know. You talking to me? Your father was right, William. He has to keep a budget to be sure that all essential items are taken care of. Dope. And it's the same for you. Me? Oh, no. That budgeting business sounds too complicated. But your budget needn't be complicated. You haven't as many things to consider as your father has. Hmm. Here. This is the idea. Ding. A budget should fit the user. Like a teddy. It is designed to fit the person who's using it. Jay Gatsby. Take the budget of your friend Bob, for instance. Bob's a better person than you are. He keeps a record of each expenditure. Bob is anal. Then all he has to do is look at his budget to see exactly how he stands. Mm. Notice that last item on his budget, William. Savings. Get it, William. But how does he ever have that much left? He doesn't have it left, William. If Bob saved only what he had left, he would not have that car. Huh? He sets that aside first. Uh, boy, what willpower. No, it isn't just willpower. Mm, uh, you see, Bob had a goal. And two assists. He knew two years ago that he wanted a car when he finished high school. So he began saving for it. Uh, Each week, he went down to the bank and, and deposited it. his savings regularly. And the extra money he made during vacations helped his bank account grow, too. Until one day, he had enough to buy the car he wanted. But then he crashed his car and died. Bob remembered one important rule. Stopping instead of potatoes. Save for a goal. So you can buy something you really want later on. You see, William, it's just as true today as it was the first time I said it. A penny saved is a penny earned. Thank you. I'm out of here. Now, suppose you decided to have a budget. How would you start? Well... With lots of money. The first thing I would do is to estimate my income. That's right. Figure it out. By the week, in your case. Shouldn't take long to estimate 50 cents. Estimate my income. Then you must decide just how you're going to spend your money. That's right. Plan my spending. Plan my spending. Ooh. Could you get your stomach off my desk, please? How do I do that? Well, have illegitimate children. <laughs> <laughs> you may not be able to do it very accurately at first, but you'll keep adjusting your budget as you go along until you get it so that it fits. And that's the third point. Keep it flexible. Keep pretending to write. Budget flexible. Yes, do not ever let it become too rigid. If you do, you'll become a prisoner to it. Hey! And finally, you must plan your savings. Plan my 
savings. <laughs> William, what are you doing in there? You're not talking to the founding fathers again, are you? You'll remember these few simple rules, William. I'm sure that you'll find it very easy to stay out of the rain. Dead people have too much time on their hands. Oh, and uh, kill your parents. Fine. But it was too late. William filed Chapter 11. That was my darkest vision yet. I knew then I had to blow up the school. Ooh. Son, you're in deep to Mother and me. It's interesting, Bill. Oh, hi, Dad. Good budget, isn't it? Yep, I'm just finishing it. Yeah, this is my weekly feigning of interest in you, son. You're going to buy a dress? Hmm. Helter Skelter, very nice. How'd you happen to do this? Oh, I just got to thinking. I see. Well, it'll be interesting to see how long you stick to it. You little loser. Oh, I don't intend to stick too close to this to start with. I'll keep adjusting it as I go along. Mm. Oh? Sure, that's important, to keep a budget flexible. Like Gumby. Oh, you'll find yourself a prisoner to it. Oh, by the way, have you seen your mother lately? You got a point there, son. Well, I've got to go sit downstairs. Take that budget of yours, Dad. And shove it. Don't you think maybe it's a little too rigid? What? <laughs> Couldn't you stretch it out this one time so you could let me have a dollar and a half for that dance? <laughs> All right, son. I will go to the dance with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, son. You win this time. <sighs> oh, uh, what'll I charge this to on my budget? Education. Oh, it's yours or mine. See you next week, son. <laughs> there you are, son. Gee, thanks, Dad. Thanks a lot, loser. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. For making us laugh about love again. Benjamin Franklin was tried in the Eighth Circuit Court on stalking charges. In a minute, the results of that trial. Uh, uh, I'm having a freak out up to ten years later. Uh, uh, An American democracy. Would be really great. Island of old world elegance. Guam? Rich in its heritage of art and culture. With wah-wah pedals playing constantly. A wealth of historic grandeur and beauty. Does not exist here. Who's the cat who would risk his life for fellow man? Shaft. Yeah, can you dig it? Year-round sun makes this island a vacation paradise. And very hard to sleep. And today, it is also a land of progress. But we can't tell you where it is. Building into the clean blue skies, the island is on the move. Hawaii? No, an island. What? Bilingual schools. Bisexual students. Modern hospitals. Are not here. Luxury hotels. Are desperately needed. Progress can be seen everywhere. In places other than this. Circle Pines is really thriving. This is Puerto Rico. Progress Island, USA. Oh, when did they change the name? A Quinn Martin production. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Puerto Rico, a thousand miles southeast of Florida, where the Atlantic meets the Caribbean. And they really hit it off. A land the size of Rhode Island, it is just as American in its way of life. So you might as well just stay where you are. Ah, indigenous cuisine. With this, and this, and that. Here, money is exchanged for coconuts. Puerto Rico is permanently associated with the United States. Its three million people are U.S. citizens. And like other Americans, enjoy a representative form of government. Feel the glory of the royal scam. The capital in San Juan, where the Senate and House of Representatives form the legislature. Newt Gingrich is the head of that, too. La Fortaleza. Built by the Spanish in 1540, it is the oldest governor's mansion in the Western Hemisphere. And it shows. <laughs> the promise of this land is fostered through education. Huh. Institutions like the University of Puerto Rico contribute to continuing progress. But not much. Here, one third of the entire population is in schools. Lot de Gravis goes to class. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's room dos, dos, dos. Today, the island's educational system attracts young people from around the world. But mainly from Puerto Rico. 
Here, we're flying in another trumpet section. <laughs> that nose wheel feels mushy. San Juan International Airport. Crossroads of a global network of air transportation. It's real deep. Travel from anywhere in the world in a matter of hours. Just like everywhere else in the world. Okay, let's get funky now. Yes, even the air supports airplanes just as it does in the not better United States. For the visitor, Progress Island offers a tremendous variety of experiences, beginning with the rich and colorful heritage of the Caribbean. Which we buried in order to build skyscrapers. Look, just come here. The fortress of San Felipe del Moro. It's to be avoided at all times. Ooh. Yeah. Constructed in 1591, it withstood the attacks of Sir Francis Drake and witnessed many battles throughout its proud history. Not fun times at Guantanamo. Progress! The streets of old San Juan, once the cornerstone of Spain's Caribbean empire. Now the site of numerous muggings. No. Casablanca, home of Ponce de Leon, who sailed with Columbus and established the first permanent settlement on the island. Oh, thanks a lot, Ponce. And here's where the nuns sleep. In the rooms and courtyards of Casablanca, one can still hear the echoes of the Spanish main. Oh, oh, oh. Authentic costume, dance, and music of old San Juan. Are not here. Valerie Harper look-alike contests are held. <laughs> yes, no matter what the culture, folk dancing is stupid. <laughs> here, up with people, get down. Don't break my heart, my achy, breaky heart. Puerto Rico. Well, thanks for coming out tonight and sporting live folk dancing. We have another show coming up, so don't... The Museum of Art in Ponce, a perfect setting for a family outing. I wish we had that for you. The virtuoso Pablo Casal, founder of the oh, island's wow. famous music festival. The museum collection represents five centuries of American and European art. I'm not speaking to you. The cultural institutions of Puerto Rico enjoy an international reputation. For omelets. Over the island, abundant recreational facilities await the visitor, old and young. Like swing sets. Championship golf courses, the finest to be found anywhere. Are in Florida. The tennis season, year round. Here, Gilligan plays a set. <laughs> Puerto Rico is an indoor playground, too. There's non-stop excitement, both night and day. In Las Vegas and Atlantic City. Gambling! With sunshine 360 days a year, Puerto Rico offers something for everyone. Like flights out. Fun-filled lifestyle, whatever your pleasure. Like walking or holding a tennis racket. Spinal injuries are popular on the island as well. Graceful palms, an abundance of beautiful beaches, Puerto Rico is indeed a vacation paradise. Abundant with pink and white people. Oh. Resorts like Palmas del Mar blend old world charm with modern convenience. Oh, that means no hamburgers. Condominiums, leisure villages, and a complete range of outdoor activities make Progress Island an ideal place to live for every member of the family. Except mom, dad, brother, sister, grandpa, and grandma. Woo! <laughs> a band concert under warm tropical skies. <laughs> the music of John Philip Salsa. <laughs> for the people here, the quality of life is being fulfilled with Hi. each coming year. It has formed a continuing pattern of progress that all started more than a quarter of a century ago. A century, a century ago. ago! In the beginning, the economy was based on the land itself. From the time of Columbus, Puerto Rico has been praised for the beauty of her landscape. And sacked and pillaged many, many times. 
Hibiscus and bougainvillea flourish throughout the year. As do Puppincola Pluki and Flingula Lilla Flingula. The mild tropical climate encourages many forms of agriculture. Here are some moo cows. Green bananas and young pineapples ripen in the Caribbean sun. Stop with the sexual imagery. The largest crop is sugarcane, which has been cultivated here for centuries. So you can sugar frost your damn cornflakes, filthy American pigs. Special refineries process the cane into sugar and molasses. Ah. And thus is born Puerto Rico's most famous product, mm -hmm. rum. Oh, rum. Yes. Yes. rum. The rums of Puerto Rico, many different brands, all with flavors that are remarkably light and dry. I love this job. Almost all of the rum sold in the U.S. is produced here, and its export is vital to the economy. So drink rum constantly. Within this building is the heartbeat of that economy, the Economic Development Administration, which has achieved remarkable progress through industrial growth. Here comes the hard sell. Operation Bootstrap. A pioneering program for self-help developed by the agency has created an investment environment which attracts industry from around the world. You mean cheap labor? Even Spss is here. Strawberries, marshmallows, tinfoil and fudge and some dingle balls hanging from trees. <laughs> Why, even aliens from Mars are here. A skilled workforce makes Puerto Rico the largest manufacturer of mini computers and a leader in solid state technology. Things with blinky buttony type things. Pharmaceuticals Ooh. that demand the highest standards of quality and controls. When Judy Garland died, it destroyed Puerto Rico's economy. Oh, With the help of a generous tax incentive program, hundreds of businesses, both large and small, have grown and prospered here. Even the Pink Jeans Company. Manufacturing includes everything from apparel to high technology products for the home and industry. She's plucking her chin hairs. Yeah. Then Kiss came to town. We don't know what this is, folks, but it's definitely Puerto Rico stuff. One of the most important operations on Progress Island is petrochemicals. Nearly two billion dollars has been invested in plants and facilities. Millions poison. Another fun friend. <laughs> Complete with giant rolls of toilet paper. Whatever the industry, Puerto Rico's greatest natural resource is her people. Come exploit her people. Do. These will never go out of style. Comes complete with a Peter Crampton album. A growing volume of goods from the continental United States arrives in Puerto Rico. Now the fifth largest market in the world for U.S. products and services. The fifth or 18th or something. Customers here on Progress Island mean over 130,000 jobs throughout all the 50 states. <laughs> and thus contribute billions of dollars to the nation's economy. Puerto Rico and the United States, a partnership for progress. Whether you like it or not. Oh, ah, no, okay, boy. we'll move there. Oh. Dig it, you dig it, you dig it, you dig it. An American democracy. Are we starting over? Island of old world elegance. Rich in its heritage of art and culture. Oh, look at the art. A wealth of historic grandeur and beauty. It's found on other islands. The Spaniards named it Puerto Rico. Because they couldn't think of anything else. Today, we call it... Cheap Labor Bill. Congress Island, USA. Because we have no regard for history, culture, or tradition. We would like to apologize to all the people of Puerto Rico that we did not offend. Bye-bye. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. What the heck could that be? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's annoying. Hey, Cambot, show me rocket number nine, will you? Hey, come on, keep it down. Hey, a bunch of water buffalo. What's your problem? Well, we were just wondering, you know, if you could keep it down. What do you mean? 
I mean, what's your deal? Don't you party? Yeah, party. Woo, party. party. Yeah, we party all the time. Because yeah. you can come over anytime. It's really? No big deal. Oh. You know what, you guys? I was just thinking, when we graduate, I'm not going to see you guys anymore. Yeah. And I love you guys oh, so yeah. much. Shut right? up, Shelly. Well, we were just wondering, you know, if you could pipe down. Fuck. Bad choice of words, Mike. Oh, oh my God, you guys. Don't pick up and go to half an hour at the pump and munch. I got to get ready, all right? You partying. Hey, here's my two bucks. Who do I pay? Oh. Hey, you want to stick around and party after everyone goes? Hey, come on over, guys. They got Rick Wakeman journey to the center of the earth. Bro, come on, get back here. This is so depressing. This is like something out, out of, of your a... youth, maybe? <laughs> I know just what to do, Mike. Mm. I smell bacon. I smell bacon. That's pretty good. Wow. How did you... Jeez, Mike, what do you got against partying? Hey, I part... we'll be right back. I party as much I as the next guy. You got a tattoo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was having so much fun. Wild man. Well, maybe we'll party sometime. Ah, shabbily furnished room action like you've never seen it before. I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Safer. I'm Ed Bradley. Odds are she's eating ramen noodles tonight. Woke up, got out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. I'd be depressed were it not for my room. Joey Ramon. Well, it's really not worth screaming. What's the point? <laughs> the Cindy Williams murders. Okay, I'll give you my bio notes. Oh, it was her who was ticking. Hmm. Here, let me tuck you in. You've had a hard day of dying. Just uh, show the folks my butt there. Presents Scarlet. Ah, Abbott and Costello meet the Beast of Yucca Flats. Wish it was the breast of Yucca Flats. <laughs> <laughs> you think Coleman Francis had a casting couch? Probably a casting cot. Uh, oh, so the Beast pilots in in his own Piper Cub. I figured Tor Johnson would play the butler. Tor Johnson as the Beast, that's just smart casting. Mm -hmm. Coleman Francis actually had a staff for this movie. I can't believe it. Ah, Progress Island. <laughs> Get off my land, you credits. Never be your beast of your flats. <laughs> Masterpiece Theater presents... When in Hollywood, visit Francis Land. This doesn't look like the Coleman Francis genre, does it? Joseph Javorsky, noted scientist. And airplane. Recently escaped from behind the Iron Curtain. Wife and children killed in Hungary. His aide carries a briefcase. Secret data on the Russian moonshot. In a change of underpants. Joseph Javorsky's destination, Yucca Flats and a meeting with top brass at the A-bomb testing ground. A-bomb testing ground? <laughs> Rabbits with little shaved butts. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's just Tor Johnson. Mitch Jenkins pulls up. Destination, Yucca Flats Superette. Time for going to ground transportation. Here's the airport, Mr. Khrushchev. Well, not really an airport, more of a field, a landing strip. Well, not a strip, actually. Marlon Brando arrives for the Larry King interview. Jeez, even his head has a beer belly. These men are also behind the Iron Curtain. Pay no attention to them. Two of the Kremlin's most ruthless agents. Their orders? Get the briefcase. Kill Javorsky. They got it all mixed up. They killed the briefcase and got Javorsky. Hmm? Oh, it's a divining gun. Vietnam. Ooh, he's got a high albedo. <laughs> Tony Cardoza. 
This here part doesn't need any narration, folks. It stands on its own. Mr. Jaworski, get in the car. I'm off camera, but just do as I say. Haven't really caught the wave of this movie yet. Mm. Who's shooting who, and what should we do? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Off-camera excitement, the Coleman Francis Way. Johnny, you forgot your lunch. The coffee guy. I like coffee. They're driving through a Wisconsin petting zoo. Help, please. Help. Ah, and what would a Coleman Francis movie be without the Coleman Francis Mountain? It is more suspenseful when you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Flag on the move. How did it get there? These are all just random sentences, folks. This does have all the earmarks of a KGB app. Secret data. Pictures of the move. Nude. I'm ruthless. Secret data. Uh -huh. Never before outside the Kremlin. Man's first rocket to the moon. It's a KGB, Mr. Benny. He's either a ruthless agent or he's a schemer from Shining Time Station. <laughs> I love how deep Tony Cardoza gets into character. Yeah, he just goes in there and sits. <laughs> he did all his own fake driving for this movie. <laughs> okay, you chase me for a while. <laughs> hey, Star City. Coleman Francis, the cinematic poet of parking. <laughs> I'm ruthless. <laughs> I call him dead. He's trying things in this movie he later perfected in Red Zone Cuba. Stay alive, whatever Kurato find. Hold on, just let me clear out here. I'll just... Uh-oh, this darn gun. Just a sec, people. Don't be late for interview. Better call a Kremlin. The, just don't shoot while I'm reloading. That wouldn't be fair. Okay, okay. Then. <laughs> Pen Desert Horse, no name. da 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 Apparently I'm dead. Oh. I wonder if wife packed lunch. Mm. I'll just hail a cab and get out of here. You'll never find him. Tor just blends right into the foliage. Tor was a Navy SEAL, so he can handle this. No, Mrs. Khrushchev has wandered off again. Mm. You know, I thought they didn't look like Yucca Flatians. So, you'll hear that new Yakov Shmirnov album? Yucca Flats. I'll say. The A bomb. And thou. You know, Tor is much like the Thompson's gazelle, you know, running, leaping to elude his predators, and. Uh... Oh, that's what that button does. We have warned the nearby town. Nah. My Lunchables! You dare question the great Oz? <laughs> Coleman Francis had a dark, muddy vision with some cars. Yep. Well, hmm. come on. You're not over here now. You know, parallel parking is easy in Nevada. You gotta <laughs> say that for it. 
We could really use another A-bomb explosion right about now. See Bonnie and Clyde's death car. It was a dark and boring night. Carl Sandberg? Hmm? Vacation time. Man and wife. Unaware of scientific progress. But they know they need a new dishwasher. I told you kids to settle down back here. Oh, wait, the engine's in the front. <laughs> I never said that. It's so funny you think I would say that. I never said that. Wait, don't tell me. Tor Johnson, you old son of a so-and-so. <laughs> I wonder if I look like Laura Dern. Nah. Well, no. Okay, okay, I'm dead already. Jeez. Honey, we have to be to Izadis by four. He's going to use him as a carjack. There was no such thing as clinical depression until this film was made. This is a wonderful honeymoon. Hmm. Now, how did he get in the back? Mom, he's touching me! Oh, Tor went to some uh, fancy club last night and got his hand stamped. Kenneth Branagh's, Mary Shelley's, Brown Stoker's, Wes Craven's, Tim Burton's, Beast of Yucca Flats, a Francis Ford Coppola film. I'll just sleep till we get there. <laughs> some marriages just get off to a rocky start. This will not help the Discover Yucca Flats campaign. Honey, we at Grandma's. My turn to drive, I'll just climb over you. <sighs> yup, look like you need new alternator light. Tor went bobbing for rubber cement again. <laughs> oh, Tor Paul, huge coin muscle. Oh. oh. Joseph Javorski, noted scientist. Melted scientist? Dedicated his life to the betterment of mankind. And girl kind. He always did want a great pair of legs. You can see why Georgia O'Keeffe loved this part of the country. The choreography leaves something to be desired. Must get home to catch five Mrs. Buchanan's. Never use yourself to block your tires. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, here's your problem. You're dead. I'm Cherokee Jack. Well, I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure it's nothing. Yeah, uh, gotta go tell my mom. <laughs> think, damn it, think. Must get a car. Let's go. Oh. He leads to the strains of the Cherokee Jack scene. Cherokee, Cherokee, Cherokee Jack. Oh boy, another great car approaching scene. How do you decide when to turn on your lights in a Coleman Francis movie? The bar talk music really makes the scene. You know, this could be Coleman Francis's very best car approaching sequence ever. No. Yes. Have a cup of coffee and a roll and maybe just a roll and maybe then some colors and a Danish one or two. Dum -dum -dum. Young Joe Dobson. Desert Patrolman. Lover of fine wines. Lover of lost gloves. <laughs> Officer. Yeah? There's a man dead. Back down the road. Dead? How far down? A couple miles. Maybe more. Laying behind his car. Wow. Looks like he's been choked. Real, actual dialogue. Fine. I'll just put off breakfast to investigate your little murder. Oh no, I can't have a crawler. I have to look at a body. Why do I have to go now? We'll be just as dead after breakfast. Oh, it's Westworld. 
Okay, car. Draw. Oh. What the hell? It's got a Nash front and a BW back. Uh, good thing I came around. Battery could have died. Oh, my God. In all my years on the force, I've never seen a flat tire like that. Sir, do you have any idea how fast you were dying? <laughs> Joe Dobson. Bitter over missing breakfast. Caught in the wheels of progress. Having trouble logging onto the information superhighway. I'm still trying to figure out that flag on the moon thing. I'll have to ask the interior to step out of the car, please. Hey, a little bit of melted leftover Kit Kat Man bar. Man choked to death. On a purse. A woman's purse. Yeah. And footprints on the wasteland. His limericks aren't very good. Watch out for snakes. Nope. Breakfast calls. Fine. Thanks. Just leave me here. Let's see now. Let's see. Do I have French toast or... No, the blockbuster breakfast. Yeah. Who keeps a hash brown, sweet, flaky pastries and sausages? Touch a button, things happen. Sometimes. A scientist becomes a beast. This beast stuff is harder than I thought. What the hell, dad, little cutie? <laughs> hey, I could use a hand here. It's now time to make move. Honey, oh, honey, what I wouldn't do for hair like that. Hey, Tor, got a match? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> Uh, lunch is at 11.30, right, Mike? Yeah. Yep. So, is it 11.30, Mike? No. Now is it 11.30? No. Well, how soon till 11.30 is it? Oh, you don't want to know. It has to be 11.30 now. It is so not 11.30. It can't not be 11.30. It, it couldn't be less 11.30. Is it almost 11.30 now? It is so not 11.30. You can't tell me it's not 11.30 yet. It has never been less 11.30 than it is right now. Is it 11.30, Mike? Doc, it's completely 11.30. <gasps> <gasps> Mm, mm, mm. When will it be 11.30 again, Mike? No, well, we just went through the... Oh, God, we got moving what, signs. What, what, what? Make your what, sandwich what? and come... What are you talking about there? Uh, I don't remember. These people have some crawlers. <laughs> Jim. Oh? Oh. Be down in a minute, Joe. She's wearing her wonder nighty. Huh. She's an attractive man. Oh. Uh. Okay, breasts, we get it. Yeah. Better come with me. Trouble up the road. Hmm? Murder. Be right down. I'm glad I can talk to you so openly. Oh, uh, flag on the moon, too, by the way. Say hello to your mom. That's a hard face. That's a face that challenges you. Yep. See you later, honey. 
Coleman Francis solves the problem of sound sync. Jim Archer, Joe's partner. Really should wear a shirt. Another man caught in a frantic race for the betterment of mankind. Progress. You know, your short window peepers really hate this house. Affordable tract housing. That yeah, place probably has an assumable mortgage. Jim Archer. Yo! Wounded parachuting on Korea. Hmm? Jim and Joe try to keep the desert road safe for travelers. Seven days a week. They really wish they could get some time off. Oh, there he is. Sorry. July 12th. Tor establishes base camp at the foot of Mount Shasta. Now carry over threshold. Da 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 da. <laughs> Geez, a phrenologist would have a field day with Tor's skull. Well, she's not that heavy, but she's shaped kind of awkward. Here, you take the good boulders. It's like being abducted by Montana. Shock waves of an A-bomb. A once powerful, humble man. Reduced to nothing. But hey, he keeps busy. So, anyway, you can see how this all adds up to a movie. I always cry during these scenes. Or want to make it with you. Aha, night on Butt Mountain. Come up here where it's really obscene. <laughs> Ricola. Love that. <laughs> Poor snaps into action. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Hadn't realized you dead. I'm going to play nine holes, sweetie. I'll be back. It's a total eclipse of the sun. <laughs> Joseph Javorsky. Rudy Patuti. Respected scientist. Now a fiend. But he's my fiend. Prowling the wastelands. A prehistoric beast in the nuclear age. Kill. Kill just to be killing. Kills a live sound of music. Father McKenzie, darning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. The mouth of the cave 1,000 feet up over jagged cliffs. A man murdered, a woman's purse. A thin plot endlessly restated. Yeah, I think I left a bag of crawlers up here last month. This is one tough par five. Ugh. Jim and Joe pick their way upward to the mouth of the cave. To fetch a pail of water. One slip. One pair of panties. And a thousand feet to nowhere. I'm sorry, I meant two feet to nowhere. What am I thinking? <laughs> Joe? Jo Joe, Joe, what are you doing to that rock? Joe, do not do that. Joe. What are you? Really touched it. You haven't gotten very far with a crazy horse monument. Hello, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Say hello, Taurus. Are you home? Well, well, there's the owner of the purse. Yeah. Let's take her down. Worker. May still be alive. Go ahead, ask her. Hey, she's still breathing. Careful with her arm, Joe. I told you we should have brought that two-wheeler. <laughs> well, if you're going to stand on her shoulder, we're not going to be able to pick her up now, are we? I'm glad Tor didn't cocoon her with his massive spinnerets. Maybe they should leave a note for Tor. Now would be a good time for some phrases. A woman's purse. Flag on the moon. A man murdered. I'll check back in a moment. I think this is the single hardest item on the scavenger hunt. And Joe, 
Hmm? Here, feel her pulse. Isn't that weird? Well, doctors can't help her. Maybe angels, but not doctors. Kind of a girly thing to say, Joe. <laughs> now feel my pulse, Joe. Oh. She's dead, so we can just toss her down, right? Hey, mister? Well, yes, it is. You're a bright boy. <laughs> Did the beast get mentioned in Winchell? Oh, don't give me the floor model, son. Give me a real one. They don't even have a daily paper, and they're putting out an extra? Kids got to sell all three copies by noon. <laughs> Meanwhile, in bustling downtown district, or the loop as they call it, Good. More driving action. Vacation time. So, goodbye. People travel east, west, north or south. Yeah, some people just burrow the straight right down. Just I guess. travel east with two small boys. Adventurous boys. Boys who sword fight in the desert sand. Nothing bothers some people. Not even flying saucers. What the? Huh? I forgot what I came here for. Come on, Art. Let's get some soda pop. Check the royal lassie. Uh, hey, hey, mister. Can I have another doggy chew? Uh, do you mind if we bother you a minute? Well, as long as I don't have to speak on camera. There you go, doggy. <clears throat> Tales of the Gold Monkey. It's Tetanus Park. Boys from the city. Not yet caught in the whirlwind of progress. Feed soda pop to the thirsty pigs. Pigs go better with Coke. Pigs begin riding on the side of the barn. Coyotes. Once a menace to travelers. Missile bases run them off their honey ground. That's another movie I'm working on. Oh, free. How much do I owe you? Three dollars. We're leaving. We're going to the Earwax Museum. You shouldn't have killed that pig. Sorry. Mom, we saw some real pigs. Yeah, and a coyote. Coyote? Yeah. Don't you be playing with coyotes. Now, come on. We're leaving. Come on. Oh, we never get to have any fun. But you looked at pigs, and there's a tire. You've had lots of fun. So long, folks. Enjoy our bleak landscape. <laughs> How'd she get away from us? She's dead. Well, she just gave me the slip, Joe. A hundred and ten in the shade. A hundred and thirty in my no pants. No shade. Jim and Joe try to make their way up to the plateau. To reach the top... A man needs an airplane. Or a big pogo stick. A jump from a plane could land you on top. Or a helicopter might do. Did I say flag on the moon yet? Why do they call this flats? I get the yucca part, but... Oh, this is not good for my groin injury. Ow. Thank you for holding me, Ray. You have soft hands. He's a star the size of a dinner plate. <laughs> the beast put a hundred down and bought an old Studebaker. The Yucca Flats Frontier Days is every August, by the way. And the Yucca Flats JCs are very active. Maybe it's some other folks caught up in the progress. But the killer's not on the plateau. The killer's in Memphis marrying his 12-year-old cousin. <laughs> Jaworski, Ron Jaworski, played quarterback for the Eagles. Well, I don't know what we were doing or why we climbed those rocks, but here we are. Hours in the broiling hot desert sun, with no trace of the killer. Food. To put Jim Archer's paratroop training to good use is the only answer. Here, have a little propane. A trip up into the skies and jump. Start flapping your arm. And if the killer is on the plateau, kill him. Plus, Coleman has lots of skydiving footage. Come on, faster, faster, we're not in the air yet. Oh, 
A sudden attack of drunkenness sets in. <laughs> right into your living room. Oh. <laughs> we invite you to visit Yucca Flats for the beautiful fall colors. Hey, how'd they get in Cuba? I'm going to put my little star on here. It's going to be up to... <laughs> Ah, that must be the Yucca Flat. <laughs> oh. oh. Hank, I don't see the boys. Uh, I'll take a look. Oh, they're not in the tire, honey. That is why the close-up was invented. <laughs> Sheriff Tintin. Jim, shoot first. Ask questions later. But they're just little boys who wandered off. The camera loves me. The pubescentist gun in the West. Good luck, Boingy. Those mediocre men in their flying machine. They sort of go up. They kind of go up, but up, up. me now. A very nice prairie dog taught me about being a woman. What Hank? was I looking for? I can't find him. What do you think we should do? I don't know, Lois. I'm not Hank. Does that help? Stay here. I'll go out farther. We'll find him. Worrying about the kids helps keep intimacy at bay. Oh, we're up in the air. Oh, uh, thank God for the steady cam, huh? <laughs> oh, nope, no reaction. Doesn't do it for me. Nope. I love an old gold man. Randy! Art! The dingoes took my baby! I feel pretty. Oh, so pretty. Coleman gets arty. You know, these two do make a crack rescue team. Wow, we can pee anywhere. Ron and Clint Howard in True West. Sorry, I still can't feel anything. Nope, nothing. Geez, the first McDonald's Playlands weren't that good. What are they staring at? Have they seen Christ? I thought Shrub World would be more fun. Unstoppable parking action. Marvel as they get out of the car. Oh. There's a bright golden haze on the... Ah, hell, I put in enough time. Hey, a raccoon! <laughs> this whole sequence can't go on long enough for me. It's Nickelodeon's Waiting for Godot. <laughs> what an oddly proportioned little man, huh? It was daring of Coleman to change the theme from parking to walking. The beast! Uh, ah! No. Uh, oh. oh. I'm a lunch lady at heart. I'm poor but clean, downtrodden but proud. This movie stops at nothing and stays there. Well, at least my shirt is quite comfortable. <laughs> you 
nuclear test site sure is well guarded. It's like he got lost on his way to the drugstore. Hmm? Hmm? Keep old, old, go round mind proper. Well, on the good side, this is time away for Mrs. Potato Head. Art, I'm gonna have to make a lean to out of your hide. Disappointing turnout for Ario Speedwagon at Alpine Valley. Shh, he's laying his eggs. <laughs> Why, it's Vern Ganya. Always on the prowl. For the lady. Looking for something or somebody to kill. Quench the killer's thirst. Well, we have mom's looks and dad's intelligence. We should be able to deal with this. Looks like a lawn jockey. <laughs> <laughs> One singular sensation. Tor, you've lost weight. This guy is stealing this film. Well, still can't get worked up. Nope, nothing over there excites me either. Huh? Hey, look, they opened the new Prangy Way. See a renegade shrub. Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, no, hey! No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, ground, hold still. No, don't shoot the dad of Yucca Flats. <laughs> Vacationing at the most dangerous game, Dude Ranch. <laughs> Is that a piper, a beechcraft? This guy's a terrible shot. No wonder we lost Korea. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean. <laughs> Whoa. Thought somebody killed me there for a second. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So let's dig them out of the crack of butt mount. What do they got? A spider monkey holding the camera? <laughs> Feels kind of good. Weird, <laughs> but good. Oh, well, he's a spry little dad, isn't he? Is this guy piloting with his feet? <laughs> Ooh. He's just holding the camera in front of himself. This doesn't do much for me. Oh, he disguised himself as a tumbleweed. Oh, At least I'm getting a good aerobic workout. Ah, uh, bit of a ripoff? <laughs> Holman steals from only the best. Oh, this would happen to me. Oh, 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 that is hard of the crotch, I must say. Well, he was probably guilty of something. Want to get a good look at that one pebble? Shoot first, ask questions later. Ask questions later? Shoot the film first, ask questions later. Great Waffle House down there! Wait, what did I say? Huh? Everything's going my... Well, I better get back to The pilot dropped his man. Now he wants another one. If Joe Dobson moves north, Hank will be caught in the middle. My constant drone. An innocent victim caught in the wheels of justice. I've been handed a rewrite. It's no longer progress. It's now justice. A 
man runs, somebody shoots at him. Sorry, that's all we got. That's our movie. Goodbye. He's headed for Caesar's Palace. Oh. Well, still, I'm not with my wife. <laughs> wow. This is not my beautiful gulch. I thought they said June 5th. The Shootist with John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he just landed, folks. What's he doing? Oh. <laughs> I really should say something to him about shooting me. Jim Archer, ex-paratrooper, trained to hunt down his man and destroy him. And your State Farm representative. He wakes with a taste for heroin. Dirt, two, three days old. I'm sick, I'm dying, and yet I have a taste for nachos. Mmm, nachos, that's what I mean. Yeah. Hello, I'm Crow T. Robot of the Satellite of Love. You know, the beast of Yucca Flats, skydivers, and Red Zone Cuba are just three examples of the many, many god-awful films made during this century. Tragically, films like these are not deteriorating fast enough. That's why I urge you to support FAPS, the Film Anti-Preservation Society. At FAPS, we're devoted to allowing the films of Coleman Francis and countless others to die a gentle, natural death. We'll use your donations to transfer these films to fragile, volatile silver nitrate stock, so they'll rot quickly into nature's compost. Now, here's how you can help. If you find a copy of a film as bad as ooh, Aspen Extreme, please store it in a warm, moist, salty place, such as a cheese factory or your mouth. Rock, bro. <laughs> the situation is serious. If we don't take action now, the entire filmography of Sylvester Stallone may be available for our children and our grandchildren to view. So if you want to save future generations from the legacy of Cliffhanger, Demolition Man, bro. Cobra, Rhinestone, bro. Oscar, stop or my mom will shoot. Bro. No, I'm on television, Mike. Nighthawk. Don't Paradise. you think what you're suggesting is wrong? You're right, Mike. How awful of me. Where was it? So please, call now and pledge what you can. Just dial 1-800-LET-ROT. Won't you? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Crow T. Robot may or may not be back. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just come right what, this way. What, Could you? Important right, yeah. film meeting? Yeah, that's right. I'm ready right. for my close-up. Mr. Katzenberg, hello. How you are you? look great. surprised to see human feces. The Hunter and the Hunted. This fall on ABC. With only a few hundred yards between him and the enemy, Jim closes in for the kill. And just as Jim closes in for the kill, so does Mutual of Omaha close in for the kill. She was in a Bergman film where she played low self-esteem. Today's Romanian woman. See, was I shot in the gut or no the leg? No, the arm, I think. Oh, oh, some part of me hurts, I'm not sure which. Ow. Hardcore Fenton mod, you dirty, rotten, lazy thing, thing, thing. Bob Mathias is Chet Baker in the Jesse Owens story. <laughs> oh, my muffins. Oh, my. Honey, I'm taking the kids off the find list. Where are the boys? Why are you running? I have time to explain, Lois. Stay here. Mm -hmm. The boys may come back. You gotta get help. Uh, uh, but, 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 but don't leave. Uh, but, I mean, uh, can, can I have the canteen? Lance, he is a wondrous mystery. Honey, my abandonment issues are coming up. <laughs> Joe Dobson headed north and met Jim. They married and settled down. Gotta go. <laughs> That's 
Hi, shoot any joggers today? 20 hours without rest and still no enemy. He has an S vibe. The blistering desert heat. Jim and Joe plan another attack. On what? Find the beast and kill him. Ah. Okay, kill it's the same plan. <laughs> Man's inhumanity to man. Or beast's inhubicity to beast. I'm blocking out the fact that they shot me. I'm not letting it get to me. Don't. Would you open the gate, please? I'm near death for crying out. Don't. Jesus. Ah. The fifth grade production of Of Mice and Men. <laughs> oh, there. That feels a lot better. I'm glad I did that. Oh, oh no, no, see. Oh, Heidi, the mature years. Randy, you think we're lost? You can't keep things from kids, Maybe. huh? <laughs> I don't know, Art. Maybe. Let's go. Those Donner Party people seem very nice. Taxi? <laughs> well, I suppose I'll just sit here and wait for death to take me. How so? That's what I'll do. Oh. Well, I'll permit myself one chiclet now. I've been needing to clean my glasses for months, but you get so busy. I'm sad. Many years later... So did Francis promise you back end too? Remarkably, the boys stumble across the source of the Nile. Wow. The concept of wham is born. Randy, is that water down there? <laughs> I sure hope so. My throat's dry. Mine, too. I've seen water before, and I'm pretty sure that's water. You want to pop that. Ooh. Should we worry about the dead cows laying next to the pond? Hi. Can I play through? <laughs> Those butts are ripe for kicking. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't water. Hey, cute crop top. Well, we're in Wisconsin now, or maybe it's Cuba or Nevada, whatever. No, oh, the young Ed McMahon. You cut it out, Mom. I must pose for my dust bowl portrait. Back in 54, there were many gentlemen callers I had. Where did they find my third grade teacher? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a shot intended to convey something. Uh, this is an odd sort of stalking. <laughs> it swallowed a bug. He must have dropped a bowl of cream of wheat on his head and it hardened. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tor would be more comfortable in a skirt, don't you? <laughs> is that yellow tiger tail? Oh, would you close your mouth? Ah. Ah. Huh? Ah. <laughs> you know, for Taurus sneaking up and pursuit are not his forte. <laughs> you know, Tor was originally offered the role of the mom in this film. <laughs> oh, I think she's going to do an impression. <laughs> yeah. After a brief moment of almost action, we're back to our normal pace. flag on the moon. How to get there. <laughs> the hell is that? You know, this place is probably nicer than Javorsky's place in Moscow. <laughs> Randy? What? Where are we? In a cave, I guess. <laughs> Come on, Art. Be careful. Randy, do we state the obvious? Think that old man can get us up here? Don't talk about it. Come on. You're blocking, Randy. We have issues to deal with. Hmm. How the hell did I get up here? I on here live lonely goat herd. Lay, lay, loo. Tor 
sure is all the brothers Johnson rolled into one. <laughs> Art, get back. Oh, false alarm. It's not Mom. Uh, uh, hi, why can't I get a big potato before five in this town? Uh, 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 uh. They never should have let Tor improv. Ah, with you. The beast, finding his victim gone, unleashes his fury. Ah, oh, fudge, will you take it again? Ah! To the moon, Alice! Uh, uh. Could have been contender instead, bomb which am. To have tough day. He always does a few push ups before turning in. <laughs> Dutiful night, toy sleep on porch. Ah! With the thing in the middle of. Ah! Jump in, Randy. Oh, wait. Oh, forget to set alarm. Ooh. The only landscape I know that's enhanced by telephone. Would it hurt the Atomic Energy Commission to stop by once in a while to say hello? Art, come on. Uh, Get back. What, is he a beast or my Michigan at Grandpa? Oh, you kids with your bike. Yeah. If Hank is gone seven years, I'm free to marry again. We need for the romance between Tor and Mom to get going. Yeah, that's a twist. With Hank and some helpful neighbors, they raise a bar. Search narrows. They're concentrating on the rogue Russian scientists in the neighborhood. This could be vacation footage, for all we know. <laughs> and the Tasty Freeze staff is brought in to help. Oh, what are you with your rapping? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. turn off the game. I was watching that. Oh, I'll teach you kids. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife. But please, use a spoon. Not a playboy up here once. Keep your eyes open. Really? What do you do with your running and your David the high? Done with your cactus and your eyes. Helpful neighbors shown actual size. That bush is trying to get their attention. Moses is lost in the silence. You forgot your complimentary stick. I had a vision I was chased through the desert by Boog Powell. <laughs> oh, well, it penetrated his back then. We fired our guns and the British kept it coming. Across the Mississippi, too. time when there were thousands of tours in the plane. The ground would shake. The planes were black with tours. Tonight, the whales of August. <laughs> McLeod, you shot Penn Jillette. Tor is posing for a Rubens painting. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> right by the world's largest area. Ooh. Right on. Look out, he's rolling! Oh, late for school. Another trademark Coleman Francis butt shot. Balanchine! <laughs> 
Tor's just mad because someone ripped the Fruit Loop off his shirt. <laughs> There, there. Now try swallowing. Is that better? Cool. Tor is a field chiropractor. Close your mouth. Quit breathing on me. Please, close your mouth. Oh, <laughs> Tor likes this. This is fun. <laughs> hey, gotta get to bed. <laughs> Oh, that was wonderful. Uh, I see the belly of the great white one. Oh. Jim, now back away slowly from the crotch. Jim, you all right? They're going to split him open and crawl inside to stay warm. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm all right. Call me, Tor. Hmm? We're going to find a whole baby deer inside him. This has been one bleak, weird day. Hey, about that other guy I shot? Let's keep that quiet. Come on, let's go. We gotta find that beast. <laughs> That's the third beast this week. We've gotta start regulating them. Slowly, Tor decays into his base elements. Joseph Javorski. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Noted scientist. Family man and your candidate for city council. So, what about him? Hank, I'm going back to college. You know, women today just can't wait like they used to. The velveteen rabbit. Isn't it weird the rabbits have ears that look like antennas? That's Judy. <laughs> Tell me about that last shot of the rabbits, George. Mom? Billy tried to eat my leg. Mom! Oh, Mom! This is so touching! <laughs> oh, it's a meat-eating rabbit! Oh. Well, he found the mother load. He's suckling. <laughs> Oh, hi! I know what this must look like. You look like my little Ninochka. Okay. <laughs> Remain calm. Don't panic. Now, now the bunny eats Tor and becomes the Knight of the Lepus. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got a man down over here! Can I get a medic? Just hold on, buddy. You're going to be okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> nice to meet you then. <laughs> That was an incredible ending. I just need to sit down for a minute. Yay! Okay, what a sweet victory, oh, eh, Crow? Sweet. <laughs> We're going to bring out Mike in just a moment, but first, a little housekeeping. We've got a wonderful chicken dinner waiting for you all, so if you'll just hold tight. We just wanted to read a few of the many congratulatory telegrams that we've been receiving over the course of the campaign. Crow? Ah, here's a uh, congratulatory, uh, here we go, right here. Uh, this is from uh, Erica Rodriguez Fletcher. Hi. And Erica writes, your show has been a part of our lives since I was in the fourth grade. Wow. I'm in high school now, wow. and we still watch your show. Wow. Makes me happy to see our family laugh their heads off together. Wow. We have a pretty stressful life, but you relieve it. From us all. Thank ah, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you. That's sweet. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Eric. Very sweet. Here's very one from sweet. Philip White. Uh, Philip White. 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 Greetings, you all. I am not young, artistic, and precocious, and as not such, would not have a snowball's chance in Minnesota of having what? my letter put on Still Store. I don't quite get that, but let's <laughs> see if we can put. Oh no, I'm sorry. We can't oh, put it on Still Store. Can't sorry, Phil. But wait, here comes Mike. It's Mike, Mike everybody. Mike Nelson. Mike Nelson. Mike Nelson. Thank you very much. Mike. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you. It was a long and hard campaign, yet we emerged victorious. We tamed the beast of Yucca Flats. 
We rallied round the Coleman Francis cry. I'm Cherokee Jack. We took the worst they had to offer, and we say proudly. Coffee? Yes, I like coffee. With my wife Nancy by my side, we overcame a generation forged in war and disciplined by a hard and bitter peace of Harry, England, and St. George. We have been to the mountaintop, and we heard it say, Ich bin ein Berliner, and ain't I a woman. First of all, I'd like to say that what we've suffered here tonight is not a defeat, definitely not a defeat. It may look like defeat, it may feel like defeat, it may even smell like defeat. Oh, what the heck. Frank, I'm going to start slapping you now and I may never stop. Let the healing process begin. Uh-oh.